Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 side scroller series. In today's video we are going to be doing some basic artificial intelligence, so we're basically going to be getting an enemy into our level and we're going to have him chasing us down, running up to us, taking away some of the player's health and, in, and, and exploding on impact. So let me go ahead and show you. So when I press play, you can see you've got this little man here running after me, chasing me down. And then when he does reach up to me, he's going to take away some of the health. He's going to explode and it is looking awesome. It just makes our level and our game a little bit more interactive, gives us something to avoid and all of that good stuff. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this. Now, what I'm going to do before I do go ahead and start coding it up is I'm going to give you a quick overview of, all, of how this was actually all done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly open up the blueprint for this so you can see exactly uh, how this whole setup is done so that you can follow along a little bit easier as we go through this tutorial. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to open up the event graph. Now there's not too much to this artificial intelligence. Most of it is actually inherited from the player blueprint which we'll be going over shortly. So what I've done here is basically when the player actually sees uh, well, when the pawn, the AI, actually sees the player character, it's going to move to the target location, which is the side scroller character. From there, it's going to destroy itself, spawn an explosion emitter, play a little sound, and then also it's going to take away some of the player's health. Um, there's a lot to do. Now, once again, guys, you can take this one step further and you can do a lot more than this. Uh, it's entirely up to you. You can have different player character, you can have different behavior. It's entirely up to you. This is just a basic system for you to implement into your game. Now, let's go ahead and start things off. Now, I ignore this player character that I've just created here, the enemy character, we'll be creating another one. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that for now. And then before we can go any further with doing AI stuff, there is one important thing that we need to do. And that is simply put, we need to have a, navigate, a nav mesh bounds volume in there. So this nav mesh bounds volume is simply going to tell the player and tell the AI where they can and they cannot move. So we're not actually gonna be able to see it, but the computer is and the engine is and it's going to tell the the AI where it can move where it can't move so we need to go ahead and add one of those into there so what we're going to do is go over to volumes and then from there if we go all the way down find a nav mesh bounds volume drag that into your scene and from there you can see it's disappeared as of right now in version 4.1.5 um, there's a little bug where it actually disappears but it does move over into the world outliner in the top right hand corner over here what we need to do is we actually need to scale this up so that we can actually see it uh, not so that we can actually see it but so it actually covers the whole level and it will work because at the moment it's quite small so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the scale up so if we go ahead and set this to something like 5 by 5 by 5 you can see it then becomes visible and you can see it but it's not big enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so 50 by 50 by 50 and you can see it now covers the whole world which is quite great. Well not the whole world but the whole level, the actual interactive bit of our level anyway. And I'm also going to make sure I set the location to 0 zero and zero and that will perfectly center it now if you want to help on the performance i would maybe advise making it a little bit smaller just so that it's in reach so maybe something like 25 by 25 by 25 it's entirely up to you for me this looks quite good so i'm going to leave it at that now, whenever we make changes to our nav mesh, we need to make sure we go up to build and then build the paths and that will generate the paths for the player and the, not for the player, but for the AI. And then that way they know where they can and they can't go. If you don't build the paths, more than likely it is simply just not going to work. So having done that, let's go ahead and create the AI now. So like I said previously, the easiest way to do this is actually to make it all inherit from the player character. The reason why I'm doing that is because the player character's got the skeletal mesh, it's got all of the animations, and it's also got the all the blueprints to make it move left, right, and it's just going to look great. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate the side scroller character here and then I'm just going to start deleting elements from that. So I'm going to rename this new copy of the side scroller character. I'm going to call this AI character for now. Once I've done that, go ahead and open it up and let's take a look at what's inside of here. Now, first things first, the movement input and the jump stuff, we're going to delete that. We don't need any of that for now. 
And we also don't want this little AI using any of the player abilities, so I'm also going to be removing all of the blueprints for that stuff. Now, because I've removed all the blueprints, I've also got to make sure that I delete all of my variables in the bottom left here. So basically, literally all we're going to have is a basic little player um, with no logic and nothing behind it. We are going to be coding this up from scratch using blueprints. So if we go into our viewport, there's one thing we need to do before we can turn this into artificial intelligence. So we need to go up to components, and then we need to type in pawn sensing and add a pawn sensing component what this is going to do is it's going to allow this little character now to be able to see other pawns other enemies other players and that good stuff now from here we can create an on uh, on c pawn event which is quite nice but before i do that there's a couple of things i want to delete a couple of things we don't need so you can see we've got the camera there we don't, we don't need that, so I'm going to simply select that in the components panel in the top left and delete it. Spring arm, going to delete that as well, and then I'm going to leave the rest of the stuff in there. With the pawn sensing, make sure you compile this um, first, and then if you click it, you can actually see the radius that the enemy or the AI will be able to see. You can change a couple of the parameters and the settings with this if you wanted to, um, but for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. The one thing I will change is I'm going to change the peripheral, uh, peripheral vision angle so they only see in front of them a bit like this it's not going to be all the way out to the sides it just makes it a little bit more realistic um so i'm just going to change that you don't have to if you don't want to but for now this is great so basically if something's standing to the side of him he won't be able to see it just because you know that's sort of how vision works but leaving this how it is we now need to go into the event graph and we need to create a on c pawn event so with the event graph selected and the pawn sensing selected, create an on C pawn event. From this on C pawn event, what this is going to allow us to do is when it does see the pawn that we want it to, we can tell it to fire off stuff. So we can tell it to move to it, we can tell it to destroy it, and all of that good stuff. Now, the way this works is it's only going to interact with one pawn, the one that you put in here. And for us, we only want it to work with the side scroller character. So I'm going to drag out this little pawn element here, and I'm going to simply type in cast to side scroller character. And now, as the side scroller character, we can do a whole bunch of stuff. Now, what I want it to do mainly is move to the character. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, as side scroller character, drag that out and type in um, AI move to. And what this is going to do is it's going to create an AI move to node. Now, this isn't always the best way of doing it because you get this world context object thing here. Um, so, I wouldn't do it that way. Instead, go to execute and simply just type in AI move to, and you'll have a more simplified version where you've simply got pawn, destination, target actor, and then radius and a few other bits. Now, the target for our AI is simply going to be us. We want it to run into us and chase it down. So we're going to hook up target actor to as side scroller character, and that will pretty much get the location of it. So we don't because it's getting the act because it's getting the location of it that way we don't need to hook up anything to destination now the pawn bit here is pretty much which pawn which enemy or which ai or which ai you actually want it to run into or which one you want to move even so i'm going to grab my pawn and i'm simply going to make a reference to self so that will move itself because we're in the ai character at the minute and then and then we're simply going to go and compile that Having done that now, what we're going to do is we're going to compile this and then we're going to move into our scene. So I'm going to press play and obviously first I've got to put the AI character in there. So I am going to find my character wherever that's going to be just over here and I'm going to move him along a little bit and I'm also going to rotate him so he actually faces the player. So I'm just going to move him 90 degrees round, press play. And you can see he runs into me, but he doesn't do much else at the minute. And he's going to keep on chasing me for now, which is great. So that's all working. He's moving towards us, and that's doing exactly what we want it to do. So now what we need to do is tell it to destroy itself when it touches us, take away some player health, play the sound, play the animation for exploding, and all of that good stuff. So we've got a couple of nodes on the side here. We've just got a normal execution node an on success node and on a fail node. So basically what we're going to be doing is if it succeeds touching us and actually getting to me, we're going to tell it to 
fire off that sequence of events. If it fails, we're going to simply tell it to do nothing at all. And then with this normal execution one here, this will simply fire regardless if it succeeds or it fails. The only one we want to worry about for now is succeed. And we're simply going to drag this out and we are going to type in destroy actor. If we go ahead and compile this, if we press play now, it should run into us and it should just disappear into space and that's great. So what we need to do now is add a little bit of feedback, add in that emitter for the explosion to make it a bit more realistic, play the sound and also take away some of the health. So from this, from the destroy actor, drag out the execution node and simply type in spawn emitter at location. And then for the emitter template, we are going to be using this explosion effect here. So just go ahead and click that. And then as far as location goes, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to type in get player character. And then from there, I'm going to get the location of the player character and hook it up in here. So that way the player explodes because that's where the player and the AI are going to be meeting, where they're going to be touching, and that's where it's going to explode from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in get actor location from here. And then for the return value, just hook this up into get actor location and that's all good. So if we press play now, it runs into me and it will explode and that is great. Next thing is the sound. That's quite simple and we're going to be using the same setup for get actor location as well. So what we're going to be doing from here is simply type in play sound at location. Location is going to be the player once again. And then for the sound, just type in explosion and you should have an explosion sound effect built in here. And we're just going to use explosion underscore Q. If we compile this now, run into it one more time, you can hear the sound effect as he runs into us, which is quite great. Last thing that I'm going to do is the more complicated bit is I'm actually going to tell it to take away some of the player's health. Once again, we're going to be using the same system as we have done for all other health affecting objects. So what we're going to do is we are going to cast to the side scroller character. So just drag it out, type in cast to side scroller character. And as the side scroller character, we need to simply set the health and we need to hook this up to execution and we are just going to be doing float minus float because we're taking away from the health value. Now, the top one is going to be the original value, so we're going to drag as side scroller character out and get a reference to the player health. Once we've done that, we need to define how much health we want it to take away. For me, this is simply going to be 0.25. That's going to be a quarter of the player health, with 0 being no health at all and 1 being the full player health. Object wildcard, once, to get, once again, it's simply get player character. If we compile this, let's give it a go and see what it does. So press play, runs into us and takes away some of the player health and that is looking good. Now if you wanted to, you could go ahead and make some changes to the player. You could change the model out if you wanted to. You can even change the size of him, which I'll do real quick right now. Um, so if I wanted to, I could set the scale to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. That will make him tiny, which is great. If you do make changes to size, you've also got to change the size of the capsule component. So simply just drag this down, make him nice and small, and then just move your guy into that so he doesn't float above. If we compile it now, moving to our scene, we've got our little man here. He runs into us and causes that little explosion, which is quite great. Now, that is pretty much everything for today's video. Once again guys, like I said, you can go into a lot more detail with your AI, but hopefully for now we've got something moving, we've got something a bit more dynamic, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out.